Bella and Shelly are sisters and best friends. One weekend, their parents went on vacation. Before leaving, they strictly forbade Bella and Shelly to have parties in the house. But the sisters didn't listen and invited all their friends as soon as their parents left. After the party, the entire house was a mess. So, Bella and Shelly hired a cleaning lady to get rid of any evidence of the party. When their parents arrived home, their mother, Jessica, began to yell, I told you, no parties in this house! How did she know? The house is too clean. There was dust on this glass vase when the parents left, but now it's fresh and clean. Jessica asked Bella and Shelly to mow the backyard lawn. None of the sisters wanted to do this annoying task. So, Shelly offered an easy way out. She put two cards in a hat and said, I wrote Mo on the first card and Chill on the second. Pull a card and choose your destiny. Bella wasn't so naive. She suspected that Shelly was cheating and put both cards with Mo written on them. But no one would believe her if she just tried to expose Shelly. And no one would look at the other card once her fate was decided. What should she do? When asked to draw a card, Bella should pick any and destroy the paper without looking at it. In this case, to decide her fate, they'll have to look at the other card, which also says mow. And this will mean that Shelly should mow the lawn. Over a cup of tea, Bella bet Shelly $10 that she could convert her $50 into $100. Do you think Shelly should accept the bet? There's no logical reason behind accepting it. If Bella isn't able to convert the money, she'll lose the bet. But she has only $10 to lose. Meanwhile, Shelly is supposed to be giving her $50 from her wallet. Thus, even if Shelly wins the bet, she'll still lose $40. Bella and Shelly have a certain number of candies. If Bella gives one candy to Shelly, they'll have an equal number of candies. But if Shelly gives one candy to Bella, then Shelly will be left with half the number of candies that Bella has. Can you find out the number of candies they have right now? Let's use some math to figure it out. Right now, Shelly has X candies and Bella has Z candies. Now we can sum it up in these equations. X plus one equals Z minus one. Therefore, Z minus X equals two. Also, X minus one equals Z plus one divided by two. Now we know that two X minus Z equals three. So, if we equate these two conclusions, we'll get the following. X plus 2 equals 2X minus 3. Now we know that X equals 5 and Z equals 7. Therefore, Shelly has 5 candies and Bella has 7 candies. Shelly was doing laundry and found out that her favorite t-shirt got torn. Can you count the exact number of holes in her t-shirt? The answer is not three or six, which most people must be guessing. The correct number of holes is 10. One hole for the neck, two holes for the arms, one hole for the torso, three holes in the front, and three holes in the back. Bella went to the basement to find her old books. Suddenly, the bulb burned out. Bella took the new bulb to replace it, but the wires are very tangled. Can you find the correct switch that will turn on the bulb? It's the red switch. The best way to get the answer is to start from the bulb. It's been a long day. Bella finally went to sleep. But when she saw her bedroom, she yelled and ran away. Can you tell what's wrong here?
Did you notice this zombie? Bella ran to the living room and shut the door. Is she safe here? Nope. Take a look at the mirror. Some stranger is inside the room. Bella and Shelly went hiking with their friends. Four of them went into a completely empty lake. And then, eight people came out. How is this possible? Four people were sitting on the shoulders of the other four when they were getting inside the lake. The guys made a stop to have a picnic. They began to play football. During their play, Bella's boyfriend, Rob, busted his lips and ears and broke a couple of ribs and thighs. However, he still managed to play a professional match the very next day. How can this be possible? Rob knocked on his food plate accidentally while playing. He had pig lips, ears, and ribs along with chicken thighs. When he knocked on his plate, he busted his food. On the way home, the guys went through a field. They saw a cow. It walked 30 feet north, 30 feet east, 30 feet south, and finally walked 30 feet west. All this time, where was its tail pointing? Can you solve this mystery? Downwards, of course. The guys rented four scooters in four different places and hit the road. They agreed to meet in a cafe at the gas station. Here's the map. Can you tell which scooter will reach the destination first? The third one. Bella and Shelly were trying to get the perfect gift for their father's birthday. Finally, they found this beautiful vintage watch, but they couldn't afford it. The seller offered them a deal. Solve my riddle and I'll make a 90% discount. The sisters agreed. The seller took out a $50 bill and asked, what's the easiest way to double my money? Can you help them solve this mystery? They should put the bill in front of a mirror. The sisters decided to have lunch in a cozy little cafe. The cook offered them tomato soup, mushroom salad, chicken wings, octopus, and mushroom pizza. Can you help them choose the safest food? There are mirror shards in these chicken wings, probably not the healthiest option. I'm pretty sure those mushrooms are poisonous, too. This octopus is still alive, and this soup must be several weeks old. So, Bella and Shelly should choose the mushroom pizza. After lunch, the local barista offered the sisters free coffee if they managed to solve his tricky riddle. Here's the task. Name a 10-letter word in English that can be typed using only the top rows of your computer keyboard. Can you help the ladies get their free coffee? And the correct answer is... Typewriter. Great job! Shelly got a job at a restaurant. One night, a cook, a cobbler, and a doctor went to dinner together and asked Shelly to split the bill equally among them. When the bill arrived, It was for four people. How can this be possible? The fourth person was the knight. It was just misspelled as night. Shelly and Bella were walking down the street. Suddenly, they saw this creepy shadow. Can you guess what's going on here? Should they be worried? Nope. 
It's Halloween! The guy is just walking around and scaring people in his witch costume. See? He's wearing sneakers. Shelly and Bella saw this mysterious magic shop sign and decided to go get some tarot readings. As soon as they entered the shop, a wicked witch <laughs> locked the door and said, I will make your biggest dreams come true if you crack my code. But if you fail, you'll stay here forever! <laughs> then she gave them the following clues. A. 981. One number is perfectly placed. B. 924. Everything is incorrect. C. 093. Two numbers are part of the code, but are in the wrong places. D. 147. One number is part of the code, but is in the wrong place. E. 783. One number is part of the code, but is in the wrong place. Can you help Shelly and Bella? From clues A and B, we learned that 9 is not in the code. It also means that 8 or 1 is in the code for sure. According to clue B, we know that 9, 2, and 4 are not in the code. From clue C, we know that 0 and 3 are in the final code. Clue E tells us that 7 and 8 are not in the final code because we already know that 3 is. And clue D tells us that 1 is also in the code because 4 and 7 are not. So, the correct code is 301. The witch has fulfilled Shelly and Bella's wishes. They wanted to thank her and decided to prepare her favorite drink from a recipe book. Unfortunately, the last ingredient was encrypted. Can you help them crack the code? They should add a tear of a triton. After visiting the witch, Shelly met a handsome guy, Tom. They had a perfect date. Shelly couldn't believe that he was real. She thought it was an illusion created by the witch's spell. So she decided to test the guy's logical skills. She showed him this list and asked just one question. What do these words have in common? Can you help Tom? If we remove the first letter of each word and place it in the end, you'll be able to read the same word from the beginning and the end. Can you figure out the next number in this sequence? It's two. To make the puzzle seem harder, all digits are placed apart. In fact, the sequence consists of two different sequences. The first one is 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And the second sequence is 9, 18, 36, 72, and so on. Now it's obvious that the next digit should be 2. Look at this picture. There's something wrong here. Can you figure out what it is? Most wristwatches are made with the crown on the right side. Detective Harris has come to investigate a new case. A car crashed into a okay. restaurant window, smashing it. There are two suspects, Julie and Douglas. But each of them claims it's the other person who did it. Can you figure out who's lying? It's Julie. The tire tracks on the ground belong to her car. At 9 a.m., Ethan got a call from his friend, an owner of a large business. The man said that a very important document had disappeared from his office. It had been on his desk the evening before, but now it was nowhere to be found. Ethan immediately went there to question his friend's employees. Soon, he had three suspects. Walter said he had spent the previous evening at the movies. Joan had dinner with her friends, and Zachary visited an art gallery. It didn't take Ethan long to understand who was lying. Do you know it too?
It was Walter. His ticket isn't torn. It means he didn't enter the movie theater. Look at these prehistoric people. Who is from the future? It's one of the guys carrying water. He's holding a flashlight. Cheryl was reading a book, but she was careless and accidentally tore out pages 7, 8, 100, 101, 333, and 334. How many pages will she have to fix? Just four. 7 and 8, as well as 333 and 334, are different sides of one page. Olivia called the police. She told them someone had broken into her house, tied her up, and taken all her money and valuables. When the officers arrived, the entrance door was open, and Olivia was indeed tied to a chair. And still, the detectives didn't believe her story. Why? If the girl was tied, how did she manage to call the police? Gemma returned from Asia and brought a precious porcelain figurine. She organized a party and invited all her friends to tell them about her journey. They had a great time, but after her friends left, the woman realized the figurine had disappeared. Oh no! She called the police and showed them the photos she had taken at the party. One of the officers immediately realized who had stolen the figurine. Do you understand it too? It was Emma. She hid the figurine under her hat. Look at these four matchstick patterns. Which one is different from the rest? It's pattern number three. In all others, you can find two rectangles, but this one forms just one. One scientist needed volunteers for his experiments, and two friends, William and Oliver, needed money. And since the scientists promised the experiments were going to be harmless, they agreed to participate. But in reality, the scientists planned to test the volunteers' reaction to different poisons. First, he trapped the guys in his lab. Then he separated them and locked them in different rooms. William and Oliver could only escape if they joined their efforts. Unfortunately, the scientist was extremely cautious. The guys didn't see each other. One of them could only use the bathroom only in the evening, and the other only in the morning. And still, in a couple of days, the guys managed to get away. How did they do it? They wrote messages to each other on the steamed up mirror in the bathroom with their fingers. They could read the messages later by breathing on the mirror. I shave, cut, and wash several times a day, but I still have more hair than you can imagine. Who am I? I'm a barber. Adam was driving home late at night when he noticed he was about to run out of gas. He stopped at a gas station to fill his gas tank and buy some snacks. Inside, there was a cashier and one more customer dressed in black. When Adam came up to the employee to pay, she told him, $5.05. Adam paid, went outside, and called the police to report an emergency. Why did he do it? The cash register showed 1835, but the cashier said 505 which looks like SOS. Look at these emojis. How sharp is your vision? Can you spot the girl? Right you are. Here she is, on the left. Can you find all six Y's in this picture? Here they are, good job! You take it and throw away its outside. Then you cook the inside. 
Then you eat the outside and throw away the inside. What is it? You've just eaten corn on the cob. Marcus woke up in a dark basement with just one candle burning on the table. He saw three doors in one of the walls and three keys lying on the table. How many attempts did the guy need to figure out the key for each door? He needed six attempts at the most, three of them for the first key, two attempts for the second key and two remaining doors, and just one attempt for the last key. But if Marcus is extremely lucky, he might just need three attempts. Look at these words. One of them is odd. Can you figure out which one? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. It's the word fourth. It should be spelled as fourth. Look at this picture attentively. What's wrong with it? There are no shadows here. Larry's mother asked the guy to do some grocery shopping. She gave him a shopping list and her bank card. But the woman knew her son was very absent-minded. That's why she gave Larry a small note in case he forgot the card's PIN number. When the guy was at the register, he realized he had indeed forgotten the pin. Larry pulled the note out of his pocket and immediately remembered the pin. Can you figure out what it was if the note had a fly, a cat, a person, and a snake drawn on it? The pin was 6420. Larry just had to count the number of legs of each creature. What is the missing number? It's 78. When read upside down, those numbers are 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, and 91. When someone robbed a bank in a small town on a snowy Monday, the police have four suspects. But all these people claim they've been at home all day long. Look at their homes and try to figure out who's lying. It's Rick. He returned home only recently. He parked his car near the house after the snow had already built up on his driveway. You need to move only two matchsticks to get two squares. How can you do it? That's how you can get two squares. Which of these clocks is the odd one out? It's clock C. On its face, 13 has taken the place of 12. Thomas loved asking his friends to solve all kinds of funny riddles. If they answered correctly, he helped them with whatever they had problems with. One day, Daniel came to Thomas and asked for help with his math exam. He knew the rules, though. He had to solve one riddle first. What kind of running leads to walking? Thomas asked. Do you know the correct answer? Daniel said, running out of gas. And he was right. But helping your friend with exam preparation is a difficult task. That's why Thomas asked Daniel to solve one more riddle. A woman drove from Seattle to Los Angeles. It took her two days to get to her destination. That's when she discovered one of her tires was punctured. How did she manage to get to Los Angeles? Daniel cracked this riddle. Can you do the same? The punctured tire was the spare one. 
Detective Parkson was working on a tricky case. One day, he vanished. His colleagues found an encrypted note on his desk. The officers knew Parkson had three suspects, Milana, Susan, and Emily. Who had some information about the detective's disappearance? After some time, one of the police officers cracked the code. D plus 1 equals E. L plus 1 equals M. And so on. It was Emily who knew where the detective was. Aaron's enemies kept the guy in a tower that was 150 feet high. Aaron's friends managed to have a pair of scissors and a rope delivered to the man. Unfortunately, the rope was just 75 feet long. And still, Aaron managed to escape. It's known for sure that he cut the rope in the middle. But then what? The guy did cut the rope in the middle. Not across, but along. He tied the two parts of the rope together and got down to the ground. Mike pointed at a young woman in the street and said, She's the daughter of my grandfather's only son. Is the woman related to Mike? She's his sister. Detective Jackson was walking along the street when he heard some noise. He ran to see what had happened. It turned out that some man had grabbed an elderly lady's bag and sprinted away. The detective ran in the direction witnesses showed him. After he turned the corner, he saw three doors. He knocked on the first one. The apartment owner, Patrick, opened the door. The man told the detective he'd just returned from a long run. Another man, Jerry, opened the door. He said he'd been playing basketball behind the house. The third apartment belonged to Raymond, a musician. He had just finished composing a new piece of music. After talking to all these people, Detective Jackson understood who the thief was. Do you know it too? The thief is Jerry. He claimed he'd been playing basketball. But he was holding a football while talking to the detective. Alright, take a look at the sequence of letters. What are the next three ones? Each of the letters is the first one of the numbers from 1. O stands for 1, T for 2, T for 3, F for 4, F for 5, S for 6, and S for 7. Then there must be E for 8, N for 9, and T for 10. And that's today's alphabet lesson. Take a look at the picture and tell who's a ghost. It's the man on the very right. He doesn't cast a shadow. Two people, Libby and Gray, were chilling on a beach. A police officer came up to them and said that he recognized the bike standing nearby. It was stolen from a man a couple of blocks away. He asked which one of them stole it, but both denied it. Can you tell who's guilty? Take a look at the footprints. They lead from the bike to the place where Libby is sitting, so she must be the one who took it. After an accident, Samara was experiencing memory loss. Three guys came to visit her, her twin brother, her long-lost cousin she hasn't seen for 10 years, and a guy from school who liked her but she never talked to. Take a look at their wallets and decide who is Samara's brother. It must be this guy. Look, he has a picture with her. A random guy wouldn't have one. Neither would a long-lost cousin, because the photo wasn't made long ago. On the weekend, Kira and her friends were supposed to celebrate a birthday of a friend online. But Kira didn't show up. In school, her friends asked why she didn't come. She said that on Friday evening something happened, and she didn't have any internet or electricity for the whole weekend. She said that she used this chance to study and spent both days in front of the computer, writing her midterm papers. Her friends didn't believe her. Why?
If there was no electricity, she wouldn't be able to work on her computer. A PC doesn't work without electricity, duh, and a laptop wouldn't last for two days without charging. Lenore accidentally sent a message to her sister instead of her best friend and didn't want her sister to see it. She stole her sister's laptop and tried to delete it. However, the laptop required a password. Luckily, there was a hint. Math, 2. Music, 2. History, 6, 5. Drama, 2, 3. What's the passcode? Every number indicates the letter you should take out of the corresponding word. The second letter in math is A. The second letter in music is U. The sixth and fifth letters in history are R and O. And the second and third letters in drama be R, R, and A. The password is Aurora. Esme was walking in the forest and got lost. Finally, like all the other times, she found the witch's house. Yeah, it's like Groundhog Day. She walked in, said hi, pet the cat, and asked to send her home. The witch wanted to make a deal. If Esme solves her brand new riddle, she'll help her. If not, Esme will stay with them forever. The witch blindfolded Esme. There was an unknown number of coins on the table. Six of them were heads up, and the rest were tails. Blindfolded, Esme had to divide the coins into two groups so that there was the same number of coins heads up in both of them. How can she do it? So, since there are six coins heads up, Esme grabbed six random coins and flipped them. No matter how many coins there are and how many heads up ones she picks, it always works. That's because the number of tails up coins she gets among those six random ones is exactly how many heads up are left in the other pile. So, when she flips them, they'll equalize. Estelle arrived on an island to spend her holiday there. All the locals there always tell the truth, and all the tourists always lie. Two girls approached her, and one of them said, Hey, I'm Sylvie, I am a tourist here, and this is Tessa, she's local. Can you tell if the girls are locals or tourists? Since locals always tell the truth, a local would never call themselves a tourist. So, Sylvie must be a tourist. But she must be lying about something. If she told the truth about herself, then she's lying about Tessa. Therefore, Tessa is a tourist too. Miss Virginia Dell was a rich young lady. She loved jewelry and kept a collection of her favorite pieces behind the glass in her dressing room. One morning, she walked in and found that someone broke the glass and stole her jewelry. The detective had three suspects. Miss Dell's cleaning lady, Willow, who cleaned the house every day. Ms. Dell's best friend, Kelly, who had the key from the house, and her cousin, Sophia, who was staying with Ms. Dell for the holidays. Willow said that last night, when she cleaned the room at around 10 p.m., everything was all right. Kelly said that she hasn't been in the house for a couple of days. Sophia said that it's not in her manners to walk around someone else's house and steal jewelry. Who stole the jewelry? It's the cleaning lady. It seems like right after she broke the glass and stole the jewelry, she wiped off the pieces of glass while cleaning as well. It was a stormy night, and Alana and her sister stayed up late watching a soap opera. In the middle, there was a weather forecast. The weather lady said it'd keep raining for two more days, but in 72 hours, it'd be bright and sunny. Alana turned to her sister and said that the weather lady was wrong. Indeed, Alana was right. How did she know? In 72 hours, it would be the very same time as now, so it'd be night, too. It can't possibly be bright and sunny at night. The Millers were having a barbecue party in the backyard. They made some fresh orange juice, and Giselle bragged that she could tell the difference between fresh juice and not very fresh juice. She asked her family to test her. She got blindfolded. Her brother brought some old juice from the fridge and let her drink it, and then he gave her some fresh juice. Giselle could tell the difference. How?
the older juice from the fridge was colder than the fresh one was outside. Mr. Thompson was a strict English teacher who never allowed electronics in class and read all the paper notes aloud in class, so the students had to be conspirative. Once, he read out the following note. 1, 2, 8, 13, 5, 31, 3, 15. I love this book. I used to read it every month. Can you decode what the note says? The numbers stand for the place of the letter in the phrase. The first one is I, the second one is L, the eighth one is I, the thirteenth one is K, the fifth one is E, the thirty-first one is Y, the third one is O, and the fifteenth one is U. The note says, I like you. Ah. It was a lazy day, and it just started raining when Mr. Jones called a police officer. He said someone just bumped into his car and drove away. The police officer arrived. The only person not too far away from the place of the accident was a man trying to fix his tire. Mr. Jones says that's the gentleman who bumped into his car. However, the gentleman said that it couldn't be true because he was busy fixing his car the whole time. Can you tell who's lying? It's the guy fixing his car. The rain just recently started. If he was fixing his car the whole time, the ground underneath his car would have been dry. But it's wet, which means he's just arrived there. Brittany was having a costume birthday party. A detective came in in the middle of the celebration, saying he's looking for a robber who must be there, pretending to be a guest. Take a look at the people and say who the detective's main suspect was. Look at this guy. Unlike all the other guests, his costume is totally inconsistent. It's a cowboy hat and joker's jacket. He probably wore whatever he could find in a rush, trying to hide. Yvonne went on a business trip and asked her boyfriend, Dale, to go and buy her a special chocolate bar from a man who came there once a month at midday. That day, he was busy playing video games and totally forgot about it. Yvonne asked him if he got her the snack, And he said that all the bars were sold out when he came. He even sent her a picture at the park to prove he was there. Yvonne looked at the picture and realized that Dale had lied to her. How? The shadows are too long, so it can't be midday since shadows disappear at noon. And the clock that says it's noon could have been photoshopped. Five students stand in line. Adeline isn't next to Cleo. Bellamy isn't next to Danica or Cleo. Nor Cleo nor Bellamy are next to Eloise. From your perspective, Danica is on the left of Eloise. What are each girl's names? Adeline isn't next to Cleo. So we cross them from both columns, from Adeline's and Cleo's. Bellamy isn't next to Danica and Cleo. Danica and Cleo are both not next to Bellamy then. Cleo or Bellamy are not next to Eloise, and Eloise isn't next to them. Now, both Bellamy and Cleo have one neighbor, so they must be on the sides. But we don't know who's on the left and who's on the right. Let's try both. Bellamy's neighbor is Adeline. Cleo's neighbor is Danica. So, in both cases, Eloise is in the middle. Now, let's remember the last condition that Danica is on the left of Eloise. So, the first order is correct. It's Cleo, Danica, Eloise, Adeline, and Bellamy. Whew! Get your eagle eyes ready for detail spotting, because this logo quiz will put your observation skills to the test. Amazon sells everything from A to Z. But which of these logos was printed on your last delivery package? Yep, Amazon keeps its Z the same color. Which way does Dunkin' Donuts coffee cup lead? Oh, 
Away from the words, hey, good to know. We all use Google every day, but do you recognize its real logo? It's the one on the left. Subway or Subway. Mmm, this Subway. When I eat chips, I don't pay close attention to the logo on the bag. Do you? The real Lay's logo is this one. This one is subtle. Can you spot the difference? Adobe's logo actually looks like this one. Are you a space fiend? Can you pick out NASA's real logo? The answer is the one on the left. Mmm, this brand makes cold, creamy treats. Which one of these logos is correct? The heart faces this way. Do you have the energy to figure this one out? You betcha! Monster's logo is this one. Now, look closely. Can you distinguish the real shape of Pizza Hut's logo from the fake one? This one is the real deal. Does the eBay logo start with red or blue? If you got that one right, I know you'll always get the best deals online. Starbright, Starlight, which amount of stars is correct? The one and only. Which of these nests belongs to Nestle? Ah, Mama Bird is on the right. Do you have the Intel on Intel's logo? Exactly, it's on the left. LG's logo looks like a face, but how many eyes does it have? Ah, just one. You know this one. It's where you watch all your favorite channels. <coughs> Bright side. <coughs> yep, I knew you'd get this one. Nay. Or more like Vroom Vroom. Which one is Ferrari's logo? Right on! It's on the right! Speaking of driving, how well do you know Drive's logo? The answer is on the left. Are you a coffee or tea person? Coffee lovers, this one's for you! It's the one on the left. What position is correct for the S in the M&M's logo? Yeah, the one on the right just looks better, doesn't it? Dell's slanted E sure has a lot of character, but which way does it droop?
is doing a trust fall with its best friend, the letter D. How often do you eat Doritos? If you got this one right, they must be your favorite. Sprite is lemon-lime flavored, or is it lime-lemon? You tell me. Lemon lime, so the answer is the logo on the left. Can you tell which of these is the way that Frito's logo is actually angled? Spot on, it's on the right. Pringles mustache mascot looks like, hmm. This one. Which of these Cheetos logos is the big cheese? Exactly. If the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, and the wind is blowing from the northwest, then which of these is Sun Chips' real logo? This one, of course. Ready for round two? Can you name these brands from these simplified designs? First one, can you make out what these shapes actually are? Here's a hint. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It's Star Wars. These circles aren't just circles. They look like a cute panda. This panda belongs to the World Wildlife Foundation. Hmm, orange circles and pink circles. Hmm, what could that mean? Dunkin' Donuts! Hmm, now that I think about it, I could go for a donut right about now. I won't lie, this one just looks like circles to me. Can you see what it really is? Oh, it's Kellogg's. I recognize these colors. It's FedEx, of course. <laughs> what else is blue and orange? These colors are even more iconic. Do you know them? These hallmark shades of red, blue, green, and yellow belong to Microsoft. This circle has a big bite taken out of it. Oh, it's an apple, not a circle. That makes more sense. A big dot and some small dots. They look oddly familiar. Google's logo is distinct, no matter how simplified. This one looks like a cloud, right? Is that a hint? The answer is Skype. Hmm, this logo is black and white, but it's hard to tell what it is. Did you say Adidas? You'd be right. This one looks really familiar, really familiar. YouTube. Are these dots Morse code?
Far from it, they're Facebook's logo. This one could be abstract art. But it's actually just the web browser Firefox. What logo looks like a yellow daisy lying on its side? Walmart. I never noticed that it looked like a flower. Are these two caterpillars in love? Nope, it's the ice cream shop Baskin Robbins. What brand does this complicated emblem belong to? You guessed it, Harley Davidson. If you love Brightside, I'm sure you'll also love Science Facts, so you'll know this one. It's National Geographic. You might know this logo from childhood. Yup, it's Lego. I love Lego as a kid. But now that I'm older, I don't want Lego. I want one of these. A Ferrari. 